This is, man, you just don't know how long I've been wanting to come up in here. <laughs> wow. Um, after you. <laughs> okay, so this is going to be the parlor room. Uh, this room is going to be very, very special to a working class family in the 1800s. Okay. Because largely when you built your home, uh, so a lot of times when you built your home, it was very much like you started with like one or two rooms, and then as you could uh -huh. afford to, you added rooms. Okay. Um, and then even when you had something that was your bedroom, a lot of times you would have it you know used for other purposes. Right. So to have a room that was purely for leisure, not you know not eating, not sleeping, that was a symbol of um, of wealth and a symbol of status. It was very much like you have made it. You have an area that you are. It's just for leisure. It's not for anything else. So that was definitely a status symbol at the time. Okay. So this room would have been very important to the family. Okay. Um, this is uh, Mariah's piano. Um, it's over a hundred years old. Um, most of the furniture in here is from the Yates family. Uh, that writing desk in particular was Mr. Yates's. Yeah. He had it commissioned to resemble a church organ, mm -hmm. which you can see on the sides of the legs. Um, it's a it's still in yeah. pristine condition. I mean, it's beautiful pieces. Yeah. Um, there's Mr. Yates right up there. Mm -hmm. And then the woman on the picture below him is Miss Martha Whiting. Martha Whiting. So Mrs. Goddard's uh, mother who gave us the house. And Miss Martha Whiting got the house from uh, Jack's daughter, Pinky. Yeah. Uh, Pinky, we have a picture of her over here. Sorry. Oh, take your time. And she's the woman in this picture to the right. And that's them for a Juneteenth celebration. I've seen that picture yeah. before. And that's Pinky. Pinky's the one that, that gave us, or gave Martha the house, who then gave to us. Is that Antioch? Yeah, it's Antioch before yeah. the restoration, yep. Wow. And you know why uh, Jack left Antioch, right? Uh, I've heard bits and pieces, I don't know the full So Jack was a big proponent of uh, pay-as-you-go economics. He did not believe in credit. He did not believe in like taking out loans for anything. Mm -hmm. He thought if you wanted something, you paid for it in full. And he was really big on preaching that to his congregation because he thought if we are truly going to establish ourselves as as free people, um, we should not be in debt. We should be acquiring land. We should build yeah. homes, educating ourselves, and taking out loans using credit is just another way to fall into that trap because mm -hmm. predatory banking practices weren't kind to whites, let alone African Americans at that time. So when Antioch wanted to expand on loan from yeah. the bank, he fundamentally disagreed with that and parted ways with them. And, and, yeah. and built Bethel. Yes. And Fourth Ward. Wow. Okay. Oh, sorry. You. Yes, sir. And then we come in through here. Now, this is not the original table, but um, the Yates's, uh, Mrs. Goddard, and then they told us that they always had a round table in this area, so mm -hmm. we made sure to have like a round table. Um, yeah. A lot of the pieces in this room are going to belong to um, Mariah, Pinky, and uh, oh, oh, God, look at it. that stove. Isn't that beautiful? I always get mixed up with his daughter's names because they're all names like Martha, Mariah, Mary, things like that. I'm just like, ah! Okay, okay. And I believe... Watch basin. Not that one, no. I think it's that chair comes from a set that was originally Pinky's, and Miss Martha has the rest of it. Okay. Yeah. And that is Pinky's wash basin. Okay. This is absolutely... And that is not Pinky's, but another one of the sisters. That's her uh, sewing desk. And they were real involved with the community and, like, you know, um, they would, like, teach people how to, like, sew and, and do, like, that kind of thing. That's an old singer. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah, a singer. I grew up with a singer in my house, yeah. so I love my that piece. mother used to be yes. singers. Oh, man, I'm going to have to bring my mom. I hope she's strong enough to be able to make a tour like that. Is she in a wheelchair or anything? No, she she she's on a walker. Okay. So. Um, if 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 it would help her to have a wheelchair, bring a wheelchair because this house is uh, ADA accessible. Okay. So maybe that makes she'll be able to to make to make the trip to it because okay. it is this house is accessible. Okay. And then we got the kitchen out here. Ow! Ah. If y'all are interested in going in the houses, um, if you go to the museum across the street, we take guided tours in. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah.
this would be the kitchen with a pie safe, which is probably one of my favorite pieces. It is beautiful, and I love this stove. Look at that stove. I mean, look at that. Yeah, I definitely have a, I'm finished with the video. I'm definitely going to take pictures. Yeah. <laughs> okay. This. I'm very fond of this piece right here because I uh, grew up with a lot of that uh, that uh, dishware in my uh, house. Like a lot of that. That iron, my mother yes. had an iron like that that she got from her mother who got the iron from either her grandmother or grandfather. Yeah. I'll, have, I'll have to ask my mom. But yeah, she had an iron like that. Oh, man. I love those little pieces. I love the, one of my favorite things about history is the practicality of things and how you you had to be very creative and figuring out how to go about your day-to-day -day life without our modern conveniences. Mm -hmm. So, and then some of these things, you know, we still use, like the carpet duster, like, mm -hmm. and then this piece I've never seen, but I love it. Um, this, this guy right here, so the reason it has these little, like, legs on here is you mm -hmm. fold this part over, and it's like a cutting board, oh, and then man. just flick the scraps in there, and I'm like, that is the most genius thing. Like, that's just, that's just, and then you put it in compost. Like, that's so, uh -huh. like, some of the stuff that they used to do is just so much smarter than what we do now. Exactly. Like, it's ridiculous. Oh, and watch your head. That scale. Oh, yeah. And red chewing tobacco. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My mother would flip out. I got the, um, the components to a butter churn up there. Yeah. And then we got some pieces. We got the mortar and pestle. Okay. We got a washboard. I don't know why it's tilted like that. Yeah, people in some countries like Jamaica mm -hmm. still use them. Oh, yeah. Um, My favorite is having little kids in here because they're like, what's that? I was like, oh, God. Oh, God. Oops. Sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. You have, they have no idea. No. No idea. Okay. Probably one of my favorites was I took some kids into the church and I was explaining how they used um, the church bell to communicate long right. distances. And this one little boy was like, did they not have telephones? And oh I was like, no. Man. But before I could correct him, this little girl next to him kind of bumped him. And so I was like, no, stupid. They had beepers. And I was like, oh, my God. Oh, That's geez. the oldest thing you can think of. <laughs> so Mr. Bates is head and coat? No, sir, not these. these oh, those are going to be in his room upstairs so okay. people can't touch. Oh, okay. People would be much too inclined to touch those. These are some some stairs. <laughs> yes, um, you can, and also like so the stairs, um, either being super steep or being able to see the bottom of them jutting out of the first floor ceiling. Those are usually pretty good signs that you're in a working class 1800s house. Okay. Because, like I said, they built kind of room by room, and a lot of times you had no idea that you were going to be able to afford a, two, uh, a second floor. And right. so you kind of sometimes just put the stairs wherever you could. You know what I mean? Okay. So that's why sometimes they're kind of wonky. Okay. Look at this. One more. Isn't that beautiful? It puts mine to shame. And this, that's a, is that a rocking horse? It is a rocking horse. That's not original to the Yates house, but it is of the time period. Okay. So we have it in here. There's a few pieces that are just of the time period, but a good chunk of these pieces are the Yates's. And it's one series clock. And we got the door leading out to the sleeping porch. Okay. Now you do know this is the first two story house built by an African American Houston, yes? Yes. I yes. Know. Okay. Originally the pedals the uh, pedestals were uh, square, now they're rounded. Yes. Uh, they were like a square design and then uh, they changed it to a more like rounded fluted design. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because I always tell people that and they're like, eighteen seventy that's so late and it's like well, this is Texas. It is Texas, yeah. yeah so. And then, oh, my favorite is when people, like, I love when people try to, like, nitpick and correct me. I'll, I'll tell them that slavery uh, ended in 1865, and they're like, actually, the Emancipation Proclamation was 1863. Yeah. And then I have to explain Juneteenth to them, and they're like, what? Yeah. Um, oh, and then there's Mr. Yates' Bible. Oh, my goodness. Okay. This is his room. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amazing. I mean, the furniture in here is just, I mean, it's, it's just beautiful. Yeah. Is that a baby crib? Mm -hmm. as well? And then also, um, the little seat next to it, you would have uh, stuck a chamber pot underneath for a little, little one to go to the bathroom in. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. 
And that was really common. They had stuff like that, or they had bigger ones, more out of solid wood instead of wicker. That mm -hmm. was uh, basically to accommodate somebody who was very tiny, uh, maybe elderly, somebody with a physical disability, anybody who couldn't balance themselves over a traditional chamber pot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In today's market, how much do you think this house would be worth? Uh, oh, God. <laughs> it's hard to say. Okay. Well, especially with Texas. I mean, Texas is kind of an outlier with how good our housing market is. Okay. Our houses are a lot cheaper than most in the area, so it would okay. be hard to say on average. Okay. And then we've got this really beautiful quilt right here. This quilt pattern is called, uh, I believe it's called uh, Log Pack, Log Cabin. Mm -hmm. And it was really popular with middle class um, uh, families because it allowed you to use scraps, like the little thin scraps at the end. Mm -hmm. You could basically use little scraps to make the design. So you weren't wasting anything. Okay. And you got the little toys over there. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. And then that vanity right there, uh, mm -hmm. you see the face on the top. Yeah. You can see the matching towel rack is over here. Okay. And this would be the kids' room? Yes. Now, um, Mr. Yates had uh, 12 children, uh, mm -hmm. 11 with his first wife, one with his second wife. Mm -hmm. um, now, a lot of his, he had four kids when he was still on the plantation in Virginia, so like he had a lot of grown kids. Um, so, he, like a lot of people were just like, how did he have 11 people in this house? But it wasn't 11 people, it wasn't that many. Um, that being said, this was considered the family home, so like mm -hmm. even if you were grown up and moved out, like if you needed a place to stay just if visiting, or if maybe you were down on your luck, this was the house that you could come to. This was okay. considered like the family home. Yeah. Okay. And we got like really beautiful, bit, like the rocking chair, the little the shoes. Oh my goodness! We got the little arithmetic book, which I think is beautiful, because Mr. Yates was really big on educating his yes, kids. Yes, he was very big on educating his kids. Yes, he was. He was very lucky to be able to read and write and to be as educated as he was, being a, a, an enslaved man from Virginia. Mm -hmm. um, he was certainly allowed in a number of uh, luxuries considering, but that was largely because of the unique relationship that he had with um, the, the, the master of the plantation. And that was largely due to his mother uh, being pregnant at the same time as the previous master's wife. Mm -hmm. And when the master's wife died in childbirth, uh, his mother was the wet nurse. And then um, he kind of grew up with the master's son. Okay. So that was a unique relationship that afforded him those privileges, but sometimes when people hear about those privileges, they're like, oh, he was a nice slave owner. I was like, no, it was just a unique situation. Yeah, okay. It was a, a special circumstances kind of thing. Okay.